Welcome to another episode of Financial 15. We're having some fun today. We're tackling some problems you have to solve to retire stress-free. Not one, not two, not three, but three and a half. Interesting session. You definitely want to stick around. Yes, today we tackle a major problem of a 3.5 ways to go to a retirement stress-free. That's what we're talking about. Now, if you want to find this video or any of the other videos we do, please go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We'd love to have more subscribers, more people to get all the information that we're providing. If not, you can also go to Facebook and like us there, or you can visit our website at BeckerOr.com. We have all this information and much, much more there so that we can help provide any financial advice that you need going forward. But today, in specific, we are talking about three and a half problems to solve retiring stress-free. Clint, what are we talking about with these? Where do we go? What's the first one we got to deal with? Yeah, tell our naked gun fans, those movies yes. from the late 80s and early 90s, <laughs> naked gun two and a half, naked gun 33 and a third, right up that alley. But yes. uh, definitely a couple of problems you need to solve if you're going to retire stress-free. Some key questions. I'll put mm -hmm. the first one up here for you, Kevin. This is a big one is do you have enough money? Have you saved enough for retirement? How would you tackle that? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a big question. I mean, you, what, what do I need? What don't I need? I mean, this comes back to sort of those scenarios where we start talking about a few of the, the, the active, your passive, your supportive sort of timeframes as to how you want to deal with the money that you've saved. Do I need this in retirement? What's my retirement going to look like? Again, we started in the in the first phase of that always that, you know, usually when people retire, the expenses don't change too much for the first few years. So maybe I need that sort of scenario, mm -hmm. but how long am I going to live? That's another question to be stretching with it. But, you know, we go from that active phase where we are right now, and then we move into sort of the passive scenario, don't we? Uh, absolutely. I have those three phases of retirement. We've talked, you mentioned them there. We've done other videos on them. You have the active phase, the passive phase, and then that supportive phase. And really what we're getting at here is in order to tackle this question to know how much you're going to need saved, yeah. You really got to tackle a second question. That's why it's one and a half problems here right up front <laughs> is that second bit is do you have a budget? Have you thought about right. what you're going to spend in retirement? To provide a bit of guidance here, often we tell folks, well, as you mentioned, your, your needs in retirement will likely change. What you spend at 65 is probably going to be different than what you spend at 75 and likely different than what you spend at 85. Uh, normally, yes. those are the three phases, your, your, your active, your passive, and then your supported phase. And I say focus on the first one. Focus on the active phase. Likely, your lifestyle there is going to be pretty similar. You retire at 65, your lifestyle probably going to be pretty close to what you were at 64. It's not going to be a, a world of difference in most cases. So looking at the current budget is a good starting place. You can make a couple adjustments. Maybe you have a goals of having a big trip or whatever it is in retirement. You can factor that in. But the current budget, a pretty good guide of what you'll spend in that first phase, that active phase of retirement. And once you have that number, well, then you can start to work backwards and say, all right, if that's the idea of what I need to spend, how much am I going to have to save to generate that level of income in retirement? So you can start to work backwards from there. So you kind of have one and a half problems here up front, Kevin. You've got how much yep. do you need to save? How much do you need to set aside? Well, to answer that, you really need to know that spending budget. You need a target. And we're saying focus more on the active phase of retirement. Focus up front there. Worry less about what you'll spend at 85. You can start your projections with that active phase. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, that's the really important part is figuring out the budget. And that's probably a hard part for a lot of people to do at times. I mean, if you've got income constantly coming in, or you're really worried about whether you're overspending or you're underspending or, or really what you're spending it on. I mean, if you don't have that budget put in place, then you really don't know what you're going to need in retirement. So doing that budget analysis, you're right, is the most important thing because that's where it's going to take you. And doing this sort of closer to retirement as opposed to, oh, I want to retire tomorrow. Now let me figure out what I need. Well, you can't really do that one. It, it's, it doesn't work out. So getting that sort of scenario ahead of time is there and that takes you through. And that sort of leads, as we've said, right into that first phase of that retirement style or a retirement smile, should I say, when you're looking at that active phase scenario going forward. So I agree that's that's sort of the first one and a half st steps that we need to take there in our go. problems for retirement there step stress free. What are we looking at for step number two here? Yeah, the second problem, well, I guess second and a half, we've already done the first one and a half. Yep. The number is getting complicated here. <laughs> this is going to be a complicated session. Uh, but lastly, on the budget, the reason we're saying focus on the upfront part, like Kevin just mentioned, the active phase is financial plans an ongoing activity, right? You don't do a budget yep. and then set it aside and never touch it. Likely, you'll need to review it on an ongoing basis and you can make changes and adjust as you go. So focus up front on that active phase. But the other problem here, another one, if you want to have a stress-free retirement, 
how are you going to tackle the investments? Maybe uh, a pension, maybe you're taking CPP, old age security, but then you've got this RSP. Someone's got to happen with that. You've got a TFSA, maybe a non-registered account or a corporate account. How does it all come together? Where are you going to pull the money from, Kevin? How do you tackle that obstacle? Yeah, that's one that you really want to take a look at. And what we've always sort of generally told people and what you should be looking at is you want to get the money that's the most taxed at that time to take it out. So if you're hauling money out of your RSP and it's all pure income to you, that's the money that's going to be taxed at the highest rate. That's the money you want to utilize first, because otherwise, if you leave it later on, it's going to cause problems down the road, possibly for the estate, how much money the government's going to get there. So drawing down that money first is the big one, drawing down your most taxable income. Then you follow that up. If you have an unregistered account, you'll start to take from there. And then usually we sort of look at that sort of scenario of looking at the TFSA more as a last bit effort. And the rationale behind it is because it is tax-free money to you. So that's sort of a, a general overview. Would you agree on most of those points, Clint? Yeah, that is certainly key. Uh, following those big steps. Now, everyone's going to be a little different. So mm -hmm. you have to certainly make sure it's customized to you. But those big blocks make sense. Start with the most taxable item first. I'd say the guiding feature there will be yep. your taxable income. So do it according to the tax brackets, right? Take out from the RSP, and then you get up to, let's say, 50000 in Manitoba. That's the top of the second tax bracket for 2022. Well, if you need more income than that, well, maybe instead of going way over, then you can take a little bit from non-reg or the TFSA. So you take yes. as much as you can from that first category, that taxable stuff, the RSPs, the Lears, the lifts, all those, up until the top of your bracket. And then you can take a little bit from the other areas. The idea is you don't want to die with a lot of money in your RSP. <laughs> Uh, because that can be a big headache for your estate because then it can be all taxable to the estate and can have a very big tax bill. Instead of having this very big tax bill with your estate, you can break it up and do little bits and pieces as you go. That's the idea. Overall, you pay less tax. So that's why we say start with uh, the most taxed account first and then the other accounts as required, the non-registered accounts. And then often we save the TFSA for last because it's the most tax efficient. You can use it whenever yes. you like. You can go to the next generation, very tax efficient. So that one's very flexible. We save it typically as the last pot of money that we touch. So we got two and a half problems down. We're almost at a stress-free retirement here, Kevin. We got one more we got to <laughs> talk about. This is a, a big one. We've already hinted at it just by answering the other questions, but it has to do with the estate. You need a plan. Yeah, you do. I mean, that's a big factor. As we mentioned just beforehand, those three points that we just mentioned for how you draw it down, we've done videos on that extensively. So you can always take a look at that one as well. But we've also done this in video format and we want to skim over some of what it is. You need an estate plan to know what's going yeah. forward. Do you have your will in place? Do you have your powers of attorney and your health directives going on? And again, has there been major life changes that have happened over the last number of years? I mean, for an example, if you have beneficiaries listed there and you go through a divorce or something, if you've changed your will, have you changed the beneficiaries on your TFSA and your RRSB? Mm -hmm. They have to match up. If not, there could be very big complications that go on. <laughs> so making sure that your estate plan is in order as to how you want your money divided going forward and how you want to look after that sort of scenario is very important detail-wise to be able, to be able to deal with, you know, where is yeah. everything going to go after you get to that point? Those would be some of the scenarios that we want to take a look at for an estate plan, wouldn't they? Oh, oh, yeah, that's the starting point right there. Making sure your big documents are in place. You'd want to visit your lawyer to update all of that. But in addition to that, there's the tax component of estate planning, mm -hmm. planning the estate to minimize the tax, making sure it's efficient. We already touched on how that could be an issue uh, just by answering the prior question. We'd looked at the RSPs, the Lears, those could be a tax burden on the estate. So you need to have a bit of a strategy about, all right, how we're going to draw down the accounts. What are we going to do with the estate? Is insurance involved with the estate? We did a whole webinar on this, uh, specifically yes. looking at ways to minimize tax on your estate. There's an hour long webinar. We can't unfortunately summarize it into two minutes, no. but we'll link to the webinar. Uh, I'll put it uh, in one of the cards here in the video. So if you do want to get all the details specifically and minimizing tax on the estate, you can watch that. But the idea is you need to be able to answer that question. You need to have that estate plan in place as you go into retirement because it's definitely an important piece. I think the common theme here across all three and a half of the problems we've talk talked about, Kevin, is you need to have a plan. Yes. I mean, that's, that's the key to the whole thing. I mean, you can't really start any of this unless you're willing to create a plan for it. Always the first question is, what do I need to retire on? Well, what you need to retire on depends on your budget, depends on what your state plan is, depends on how you want to draw your investments down. It is all about having that plan in place to be able to do all of this. And that's the biggest thing. And again, it is not a set it once and forget about it. It's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you review it every few years. Am I on track with my plan? Am I ahead of my plan? Am I behind things that need to be done? But you have to have a financial plan in place 
if you want to be able to survive and get use out of the three and a half problems so that you can retire stress-free. It's a big factor to take a look at. And again, we've done this as more of a, a general overview, more of a high level scenario. You can dive into each one of these topics and spend lots of time, but it is important that you do get that plan in place. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you have questions for us, maybe you want help with your plan or a question on a different topic or just want to talk about the Naked Gun movies, definitely happy to do all of the above. You can find us, chatwithclintonandkevin.com, part of our website there. There's a form, you fill it in, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Do you anything you want to add, Kevin? I'm going to use a famous Angela quote from our webinars and just the simple answer, no. <laughs> Yes, Angela, popular guest for our webinars with her straightforward method of speaking. It was fantastic. We'll be back again soon with another webinar. Until then, everyone, take care. Stay safe.